Hello, we're going to be reading the next section of the story of Aladdin. So in the first part, which you should have already watched that video, um, Aladdin ended up finding a genie after he was tricked by a false uncle. He was, um, the uncle was trying to get um, a special lamp and he thought that he could trick Aladdin and he almost did completely trick Aladdin. Um, so we'll continue where we left off where the genie um, gave in to the wishes of Aladdin and his mother to provide um, food. So they said in the last section that they lived for many years off of the food that the genie provided and selling some of those silver dishes. Now one day, Aladdin heard an order from the Sultan proclaiming that everyone was to stay at home and close his shutters while the princess, his daughter, went to and from the bath. Aladdin was seized by a desire to see her face, which was very difficult as she always went veiled. He hid himself behind the door of the bath and peeped through a chink, a little sliver. The princess lifted her veil as she went in and looked so beautiful that Aladdin fell in love with her at first sight. He went home so changed that his mother was frightened. He told her he loved the princess so deeply that he could not live without her and to meant to ask her in marriage of her father. His mother, on hearing this, burst out laughing. But Aladdin at last prevailed upon her to go before the Sultan and carry his request. She fetched a napkin and laid in it um, the magic fruits from the enchanted garden, which sparkled and shone like the most beautiful of jewels. She took these with her to please the Sultan and set out trusting in the lamp. The Grand Vizier and the Lords of the Council had just gone in as she entered the hall and placed herself in front of the Sultan. He, however, took no notice of her. She went every day for a week and stood in the same place. When the council broke up on the sixth day, the Sultan said to his vizier, I see a certain woman in the audience chamber every day carrying something in a napkin. Call her next time that I may find out what she wants. Next day at a sign from the vizier, she went up to the foot of the throne and remained kneeling until the Sultan said to her, rise good woman and tell me what you want. She hesitated, so the Sultan sent away all but the vizier and bade her speak freely, freely, promising to forgive her beforehand for anything she might say. She then told him of her son's violent love for the princess. I prayed him to forget her, she said, but in vain. He threatened to do some desperate deed if I refused to go and ask your majesty for the hand of the princess. Now I pray you to forgive not me alone, but Aladdin. The Sultan asked her kindly what she had said in the she had in the napkin, whereupon she unfolded it, the jewels um, unfolded the jewels and presented them. He was thunderstruck and turning to the vizier said, what sayest thou? Ought I not to bestow the princess on one who values her at such a price? The vizier who, went to, who wanted her for his own son begged the Sultan to withhold her for three months in the course of which he hoped his son would contrive to make him a richer present. The Sultan granted this and told Aladdin's mother that though he consented to the marriage, she must not appear before him again for three months. Aladdin waited patiently for nearly three months, but after two had elapsed, his mother going into the city to buy some oil, found everyone rejoicing and asked what was going on? Do you not know was the answer? that the son of the Grand Vizier is to marry the Sultan's daughter tonight? Breathless, she ran and told Aladdin who was overwhelmed at first, but presently bethought him of the lamp. He rubbed it and the genie appeared saying, what is thy will? Aladdin replied, the Sultan, as thou knowest, has broken his promise to me and the Vizier's son is to have the princess. My command is that tonight, you bring hither the bride and the bridegroom. Master, I obey, said the genie. Aladdin then went to his chamber where, sure enough at midnight, the genie transported the bed containing the vizier's son and the princess. Take this newly married man, he said, and put him outside in the cold and return at daybreak. Whereupon the genie took the vizier's son out of bed, leaving Aladdin with the princess. So they were magically transported in and now the vizier's son is left in the cold. 
Fear nothing, Aladdin said to her. Now he doesn't know the princess. You can imagine how scared the princess would be. He says, you are my wife, promised to me by your unjust father, and no harm shall come to you. But the princess was too frightened to speak and passed the most miserable night of her life while Aladdin lay down beside her and slept soundly. At the appointed hour, the genie fetched in the shivering bride, bride's groom, laid him in his place and transported the bed back to the palace. So they're both going back to where they were beforehand and they don't understand the magic behind it as Aladdin took them. Presently, the Sultan came to wish his daughter good morning. The unhappy vizier's son jumped up and hid himself while the princess would not say a word and was very sorrowful. The Sultan sent her mother to her who said, how comes it child that you will not speak to your father? What has happened? The princess sighed deeply and at last told her mother how during the night, the bed had been carried into some strange house and what had passed there. Her mother did not believe in her in the least but bade her rise and consider it an idle dream. But we know it really happened. The following night, exactly the same thing happened. And the next morning on the princess's refusing to speak, the Sultan threatened to cut off her head. She then confessed to it all, bidding him ask the vizier's son if it were not so. Moment. The Sultan told the vizier to ask his son who owned the truth, adding that dearly as he loved the princess, he had rather die than go through another such fearful night and wished to be separated from her. His wish was granted and there was an end of the feasting and rejoicing. When the three months were over, Aladdin sent his mother to remind the Sultan of his promise. She stood in the same place as before and the Sultan who had forgotten Aladdin at once remembered him and sent for her. On seeing her poverty, the Sultan felt less inclined than ever to keep his word and asked the vizier's advice, who counseled him to set so high a value on the princess that no living man could come up to it. The Sultan then turned to Aladdin's mother, saying, good woman, a Sultan must remember his promises and I will remember mine but your son must first send me 40 basins of gold brimful of jewels, carried by 40 slaves, led by as many other slaves, splendidly dressed. Tell him that I await his answer. The mother of Aladdin bowed low and went home, thinking all was lost. She gave Aladdin the message, adding, he may wait long enough um, for your answer. Not so long, mother, as you think, her son replied. I would do a great deal more for that, more than that for the princess. So he summoned the genie. He can ask for anything, even as much as what was asked for. And in a few moments, the 80 slaves arrived and filled up the entire small house and garden. Aladdin made them set out for the palace two by two, followed by his mother. They were so richly dressed with such splendid jewels in their girdles that Everyone crowded to see them in the basins of gold they carried on their heads. They entered the palace and after kneeling before the Sultan, stood in a half circle round the throne with their arms crossed, while Aladdin's mother presented them to the Sultan. He hesitated no longer, but said, good woman, return and tell your son that I wait for him with open arms. So this was enough to show that he could marry. She lost no time in telling Aladdin, bidding him make haste, but Aladdin first called the genie. I want a scent bath, he said, a richly embroidered habit, a horse surpassing the Sultan's and 20 slaves to attend me. Besides this, six slaves beautifully dressed to wait on my mother and lastly, 10,000 pieces of gold in 10 purses. It's quite a lot. No sooner said than done, Aladdin mounted his horse and passed through the streets, the slaves strewing gold as they went. Those who had played with him in his childhood knew him not. He had grown so handsome. When the Sultan saw him, he came down from his throne, embraced him, and led him into a hall where a feast was spread, intending to marry him to the princess that very day. But Aladdin refused, saying, 
I must build a palace fit for her, and took his leave. Once home, he said to the genie, build me a palace of the finest marble, set with jasper, a gate, and other precious stones. In the middle, you shall build me a large hall with a dome, its four walls of massy gold and silver, each side having six windows, whose lattices all except one, which is to be left unfinished, must be set with diamonds and rubies. There must be stables and horses and grooms and slaves. Go and see about it. The palace was finished by the next day and the genie carried him there and showed him all his orders faithfully carried out, even to the laying of a velvet carpet from Aladdin's palace to the Sultan's. Aladdin's mother then dressed herself carefully and walked to the palace with her slaves while he followed her on horseback. The Sultan sent musicians with um, trumpets and cymbals to meet them so that the air resonated with music and cheers. She was taken to the princess who saluted her and treated her with great honor. At night, the princess said goodbye to her father and set out on the carpet for Aladdin's palace with his mother at his side, her side um, and followed by the hundred slaves. She was charmed at the sight of Aladdin who ran to receive her. Princess, he said, blame your beauty for my boldness if I have displeased you. She told him that having seen him, she willingly obeyed her father in this matter. After the wedding had taken place, Aladdin led her into the hall where a feast was spread and she supped with him after which they danced till midnight. Okay, we're gonna end there and um, should have one or actually two more sections um, to read of the story later on. I will see you later, bye.